This video was brought to you by our backers on Patreon like Erin E. Thanks Erin. And if you sign up now, you can get an exclusive TLDR lanyard absolutely free. Find out more at the end of this video. Moldova isn't exactly the most talked about country on the European stage, because discussions and debates tend to be dwarfed by European heavyweights such as the likes of France and Germany. Yet it's not a country that should be ignored, because in recent years Moldova has been dogged by political instability, corruption and the evaporation of over a billion dollars from the banking system, all of which contributed to the status quo, a status quo that might be about to change under more pro-EU leadership. So in this video, let's take a look at exactly what's happened in Moldova, what the recent elections could mean for the country and why Moldova's future could now be more European. The path to this recent snap election is actually quite complicated, but essentially it arose due in part to a constitutional crisis, parliamentary arithmetic and a political impasse. According to Article 85 of Moldova's constitution, Moldova's parliament has three months in which to form a government. If three months elapse without the formation of a government, the president is allowed to dissolve parliament and call new elections. Back in 2019, Moldova headed to the polls to elect a new parliament, in elections that didn't produce an outright majority for any single party. And so, coalition negotiations began. On the 8th of June, a coalition was eventually agreed between the now platform DA and PAS bloc, and the Socialist Party. And this is where the constitutional crisis begins, because what exactly is three months? This sounds like a simple question, but buckle up because this spirals very quickly. If you interpret it as three calendar months, the coalition occurred before the deadline and everything is a-okay. If you, however, interpret it as three lots of 30 days, the agreement occurred after the deadline. And which side's right? Well, Moldova's constitutional court ruled the latter. Three months will be taken to mean 90 consecutive days. The then president, Igor Dodon, refused to dissolve parliament, leading the opposition to petition the constitutional court to overrule Dodon, something it did, suspending Dodon and appointing Pavel Filip, the outgoing prime minister, as interim president. Filip promptly attempted to dissolve parliament and call elections, a move derided not only by the coalition but by the Council of Europe, Europe's top human rights watchdog and the European Union as a whole, prompting Philip to step down and back down on the dissolution threat. See what I mean about it getting chaotic quickly? The other issue was that the coalition wasn't exactly the most stable. A matter of months after taking office, they suffered a vote of no confidence, causing a domino effect of political instability, with government after government either facing motions of no confidence or failing to get enough support to actually form a government in the first place. That was until eventually in April, snap parliamentary elections were called to be held on the 11th of July. Not only were these snap elections seen as critical in resolving the political impasse, they were also a de facto referendum on which direction Moldova should look to going forward. To the West and the European Union, or the East and Russia. Moldova's incumbent president, Maya Sandu, wanted to push Moldova closer to the EU rather than Russia, but parliamentary arithmetic just wasn't on her side. Prior to the election, her party, the Party of Action and Solidarity, has been in an electoral bloc with the Dignity and Truth Platform Party, together known as the now platform DA and PAS bloc that we mentioned earlier. A bloc that had just 26 seats in the 101 seat parliament, simply not enough to give rise to a sea change in Moldova's foreign policy approach. All of that changed with the snap elections though, where Sandu's Action and Solidarity Party received over 52% of the vote, netting 63 seats, an outright majority. Sandu promptly declared in the aftermath of the results that today is the end of a hard era for Moldova. I hope today is the end of the reign of thieves over Moldova. People need to feel as soon as possible the benefits of a clean parliament and a government that is truly concerned with their problems. And while the PAS has never been in power alone before, they're not exactly taking things slowly. 
At the annual Batumi International Conference, the presidents of Georgia, Ukraine and of course Moldova, collectively known as the Associated Trio, came out together to, in effect, rebuke Russia and Putin and proclaim a commitment to a joint European future. At the conference, the Georgian president stressed the commonality at the heart of these three countries, remarking, We have a lot in common, a common past, common challenges to our sovereignty and territorial integrity, common challenges to our security, and those destabilization efforts. But we have in common also that we do not want to return to the past. We are ready and determined to fight for our European future. Specifically then, the associated trio agreed to trilateral cooperation, pledging to help each other to integrate into the European bloc quicker than ever. And it seems that Europe wants to help too, with the president of the European Council, Charles Michel, hailing the conference and the declaration as an important milestone, one backed by an unprecedented investment package from the European Union, to the tune of 2.3 billion euros, with the potential to mobilise up to 17 billion euros going forward. This coming after the European Commission seemingly warmed to the idea of offering the most ambitious integration plans to the associated trio earlier this year. That's not to say, however, that Moldova is going to have an easy path to membership. Moldova and the EU have only recently started to formally boost their relationship. Just seven years ago in 2014, Moldova and the EU signed an association agreement, replacing the partnership and cooperation agreement they originally signed back in 1998. This association agreement is nonetheless the first step on an incredibly long journey to joining the EU. For some context, Croatia, one of the most recent entrants into the EU, signed their stabilisation and association agreement in 2001, joining 12 years later in 2013. So Moldova has just five years left to wait, right? Well, no, not exactly. While the likes of an association agreement can lay the groundwork for formal application to the EU, it means nothing for actually joining the Union. If we look at Croatia again, just a year after signing their stabilisation and association agreement, the country formally submitted an application and began their screening process two years later. The vast bulk of the next eight years or so were then spent opening and closing the respective chapters of the EU's rulebook. However, in contrast, Moldova hasn't even started that process at all. In fact, Moldova's not even considered to be a formal candidate or even potential candidate for membership by the European Commission. And the current candidate countries have been candidates for, in some cases, decades. The Republic of North Macedonia was declared a candidate country in December of 2005, Montenegro in December 2010, Serbia the previous year in December 2009, and Turkey in December 1999. So while the recent elections in Moldova do show a clear turn towards the EU and the West, there remains a long distance before this newfound desire can be translated into hard action. But what do you think? Is Moldova now staunchly on a path moving towards EU membership? Will the Party of Action and Solidarity genuinely be a party of action, moving Moldova closer to Europe? As always, let us know your thoughts in the comments below. Also, thank you so much to everyone who suggested this video topic, and you can add your ideas to this list by using the form below. As I said at the start, this month we're running a Patreon promotion whereby every patron paying more than $5 a month can get an absolutely free, never for sale lanyard. To claim yours, just sign up to the TLDR Patreon and click the link to the store. Signing up not only snags you a lanyard, but also gets you a bunch more perks, like early access to videos, exclusive live events, merch discounts, and more. Find out what you can get and sign up by clicking the link in the description.